Hi everyone. Let us discuss this example. So in this example, we have a sequence xk in R2. Okay, having two components xk1 and xk2. We have to prove that this sequence xk converges to point P, which is equal to P1, comma P2, if and only if the first component xk1 converges to P1 and the second component xk2 converges to P2. The most important thing then when we talk about R2. So R2 with Euclidean matrix and when we talk about in R, so that means these are sequences in R so that this is with usual matrix. So that's why DU is mentioned here. The usual matrix means D of XY is equal to mod X minus Y. If and only part is there, that means we will assume one part. We will prove the second part and after that we will prove it conversely. So let us start with one part. Okay, we will assume, let me mention here, assume xk converges to point p so this thing we have assumed what we have to prove to prove that to prove that xk1 converges to p1 and xk2 converges to p2 okay so this thing we have to prove so obviously uh, in i should mention r2d where d is a euclidean matrix and this is in rdu that with usual matrix so you are familiar with definition of convergent sequence. We use epsilon delta definition. Okay, epsilon n definition. So here also I will do the same. So let us take one epsilon. Let epsilon greater than 0 be given. So let us use the given information. What we have? We have, we have, what we have? Xk converges to point p so we will uh, use the definition of convergent sequence for given epsilon greater than 0 but see already we have epsilon so let me write therefore for above epsilon greater than 0 there exist and belongs to set of natural number such that d of xn comma p less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to sorry i should mention here xk okay for all k greater here also you should write xk k greater than or equal to capital n since we are considering sequence xk so that's why d is a euclidean matrix so let me write here yes so d of xk comma p is defined as norm xk minus p less than epsilon obviously i should con continue this condition for all k greater or equal to capital n see what is our xk our xk is xk1 xk2 right what is our p that is nothing but p1 comma p2 this is less than epsilon see i will do that subtraction component wise subtraction that means we will have therefore norm xk1 minus p1 and xk2 minus p2 less than epsilon right so you are familiar with definition of norm it says square root of square of first component xk1 minus p1 square plus square of second component xk2 minus p2 square less than epsilon to remove square root i will take square of both sides okay so let me take square of both sides so therefore we'll have xk1 minus p1 square plus xk2 minus p2 square less than epsilon square see we are adding to non-negative terms and their sum is less than epsilon square that means each of them is less than epsilon square therefore xk1 minus p1 square less than epsilon square and i should mention xk2 minus p2 square less than epsilon square and both are true for all k all k greater than or equal to capital n here also i should mention for all k greater than or equal to capital n okay so will you guess what will be my next step yes i'm going to take positive square root of both sides okay so there is no more space to write make a screenshot of it then we will go further so by taking positive square root of both sides we will have mod xk1 minus p1 less than epsilon see when we take positive square root it is better to take mod okay so that's why definitely we'll have positive value and you know that epsilon is already positive real number so that's why if you take square root 
square and square root will get cancelled simply we will have epsilon for all k greater than or equal to capital n and here i'll show you right uh, same huh, for xk2 also xk2 minus p2 less than epsilon for all k greater than or equal to capital n so you know that okay so this is definition of convergent sequence so therefore what can we write so therefore by definition of convergent sequence we can write xk1 converges to p1 uh, in rdu since this is a usual matrix right and from this one we will have this inequality we will have xk2 converges to p2 in r d so in this way we proved the component uh, sequence xk1 converges to p1 and xk2 converges to p2 that means half part we have completed here so now conversely we have to assume xk1 converges to p1 xk2 converges to p2 and with the help of that we have to prove that the sequence xk converges to point p okay so make a screenshot of it then we will go for next part See, conversely, we have to assume, as I told you, xk1 converges to p1, xk2 converges to p2, right? So, uh, yeah, target is same, xk converges to p, this is our target, okay? So, again, with the help of epsilon definition, we are going to prove it. So, let us take one epsilon first. Let epsilon greater than 0 be given, okay? See, after that, I'm going to use this information. So, yeah, xk1 converges to p1. So, therefore, for this epsilon, there will be some natural number, okay, n1, you can say, uh, such that mod xk1 minus p1 less than epsilon. And for this sequence also, we will have some natural number n2. So, let me write it directly. So, therefore, there exists, I'm writing directly, n1, n2 belongs to set of natural number such that mod xk1 minus p1 less than epsilon this is true for all k greater than or equal to capital n1 right and mod xk2 minus p2 less than epsilon for all k greater than or equal to n2 okay so after that what i'm going to do i'm going to do small adjustment okay so that adjustment is instead of epsilon i'm going to consider epsilon by root 2 here and here also okay actually it doesn't matter since epsilon we don't know its value getting if you divide by root 2 again it will be a positive real number it will be small positive real number so it doesn't matter such adjustment we can definitely do so i have done the same thing here okay so let us continue but see problem is that this inequality i will call it as one is true for k greater than or equal to n1 and the second inequality will be true for k greater than or equal to n2. Actually, I have to use both inequalities simultaneously. So that's why I will take n is equal to maximum of n1 and n2. So let n is equal to maximum of n1 and n2. So that's why we can use 1 and 2 okay, for this n. So let me mention then 1 and 2 then 1 and 2 will be true will be true for k greater than or equal to capital n okay so let me consider the same consider consider k greater than or equal to capital n then i'm going to find a value of d of xk comma p okay so let us find its value so yeah, I have considered this one k greater than or equal to n. So that's why both will be true and we can use them simultaneously. Okay, no issue. D, so D is a Euclidean matrix. So you know its definition. So therefore I need to write norm xk minus p. So now the simple task is we have to put their values there. So what is value of xk? It is xk1 comma xk2. What is p? That is nothing but p1 comma p2. We can do the subtraction, component wise subtraction. So norm xk1 minus p1 and xk2 minus p2. Okay. You are familiar with definition of norm. It says this is nothing but square root of uh, xk1 minus p1 square plus xk2 minus p2 square. But see, already we have said here 
x k 1 minus p 1 is less than epsilon by root 2. So therefore, I can write this is less than square root of I am going to replace that bracket only huh, by epsilon by root 2. But here simultaneously we are taking it square. So if you take it square, we will have epsilon square by 2. Okay, so yes. Plus let us talk about the second bracket. Second bracket is less than epsilon by root 2. But see, we have to take it square. So if you take it square, we will have epsilon square by 2. Epsilon square by 2 plus epsilon square by 2. That means simply we will have epsilon square. And yes, the fun is that square and square root will get cancelled to each other and simply we will have epsilon. So what is our conclusion? We started with d of x k comma p and we finish with less than epsilon. So that is nothing but definition of convergent sequence, right? Okay, I'm going to finish it. Just make a screenshot of it first. So finally, I'm writing the conclusion here. d of x k comma p is less than epsilon. This is true for all k greater than or equal to capital F. So therefore, what can we write? So therefore, sequence x k converges to p in obviously R 2 D since the, these are sequences in so sorry X K is a sequence in R 2 okay with a Euclidean matrix so that's why I'm writing in R 2 D so yes we started with X K 1 converges to P 1 X K 2 converges to P 2 and finally we got the sequence X K okay which is defined in this way converges to point P which is equal to P 1 comma P 2 right so therefore yes we completed the converse part also okay so in this way we the result okay make a screenshot of it then we will stop thank you bye bye